Welcome to Garden City's first core group. I'm so excited to be with you. I'm Pastor Aaron. And uh, over the next several weeks, uh, we're gonna be moving forward together, revisiting some essentials to the foundation of our Pentecostal Christian heritage and um, some essentials that I, I believe are gonna be very important for the future of Garden City. Um, these core groups, they're intended to allow anybody to jump in at any point. So I wanna invite you as we move forward to invite friends and, and invite more guests to be a part of this group. Remember, you and I were gateways to reaching this community. Now this first video is gonna be a little bit longer um, than the rest of the videos as we move forward. This is, this is sort of our introduction, just to kinda of let you know what, what uh, these groups will, will be about. As Garden City prepares to step forward into this new season, I'd like to begin with a reading from the book of Amos 3.3. Uh, 3. It's, a, it's a popular passage. Um, it says, can two walk together except they be agreed? That's how it's most commonly read. So I wanna ask you, who are the two being referred to in this often quoted passage? Um, you know, we can apply this to some broad generalities about people being in unity, but commentators, they've mentioned that this passage is specifically referring to the whole of Israel. Obviously, the Bible was written first to the Jews, right? And then it refers to God. It's an agreement, a contractual agreement. The prophet's referring to the knowledge of God and then the application. So what is this knowledge or knowing? Well, first, we have to know God, right? And then second, we have to apply his statutes. You see, it's the application, the living out of God's law that truly signifies and validates that you and I are disciples of Jesus. So here's some takeaways that I want you to consider as we move forward. First, we must walk in unity. Do you agree? We have to walk in unity. Um, another thing to consider is that we're here to do more than merely survive. God has called us to thrive. He's called this church to thrive. And then another thing, the church will always be. Um, but the presence of the local body is relevant, it's vital. We'll, we'll revisit that in a second. You see, God is doing great things in our city. He wants to do great things in your life. And in order to fulfill our mission, both individually and then corporately, we have to walk in unity. These are really exciting times. Um, you know, you'll never find a sports team, a healthy family, uh, a healthy business succeeding in anything without unity and cooperation and common vision and core mission, right? So likewise, in order for the church to not simply function and survive, but to thrive, um, we also, we've got to recognize and we've got to understand our core mission and our vision. The church is the body of Jesus. Um, in as much as it's a vibrant entity in the community, um, there is a balance of this supernatural bride of Christ and then this practical functioning organization called the church. Um, so what did I mean earlier when I talked about the church would always be? Um, if you're saved, you belong to Jesus. You are the church. You and I were connected to believers, even in areas where it might seem a little dark and challenged. Um, we're connected throughout the ages. We're connected. You know, our Father who art in heaven, the hour is you and me who follow Jesus. Um, the church of days past and the future church, we're not alone. We're connected. Isn't that cool? You know, but in order to be a force in our homes, in, in the lives of your friends and in your families and community, there's a cooperation that's required among the body, a coordination. And um, we've got to be coordinated and cooperate with those who share in our faith. And so this is where the local presence of the body becomes relevant, becomes really important. Um, so as we begin to move forward over this semester, um, my prayer is for you and I to really move to a place, a, a deeper grounding, a confidence, a clarity of Christ's call in your life and uh, his mission for Garden City. So um, this series is going to cover material that was developed by Pastor David E. Stewart Jr., um, Pastor Nathan Rakes, Pastor Lindsey Thibodeau, and actually myself um, for New Life Church in Lemonster. The intention was to strengthen the foundations of Pentecostal heritage um, and to really impart some, some encouragement uh, to our leaders. And so I wanna talk about what we believe and why we believe it. 
And we're going to attempt to uncover uh, several jewels that I believe are going to give us all a common starting point. So even if you've been a believer for most of your life, um, this is going to be the foundation uh, which we're going to begin to navigate from as a church. Uh, and so what I want to talk about with you today, as we get ready to wrap this video up, scientists have come up with um, what they call the conditions for life. There's a variety of these conditions, um, but uh, most schools of thought have kind of arrived at three basic variables that they believe fit um, for life to exist anywhere in, in the galaxy. Uh, so I thought it was a really cool metaphor, uh, a really cool model to help us describe the life of a believer. So I want to talk about the basic building blocks of faith. The first basic building block is carbon. Um, carbon is the first basic required building block that they know of uh, in our known universe for life to exist. So what would that be in the Christian faith? Well, I think the first building block is the gospel of Jesus. Turn to Romans 1.16. It says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, if you can quickly turn over to 1 Corinthians 15, 14, this is powerful. It says, and if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is vain. Your faith also is in vain. Wow. So what is the gospel? Uh, well, the gospel, it means good news. Um, but if I was going to break down the gospel, it was taught to me this way. The gospel is the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. This is very important. The gospel is the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. This is powerfully important to understand what this good news is. The second element that they believe is required for life in our galaxy is water. Um, some of you might think I'm going to talk about the Holy Spirit being water, and he's often referred to as living water. But actually, what I believe um, water is in our metaphor is going to be uh, the unity of the saints. And this flows from the Spirit. John 17, 21 says that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, so that they may also be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. You know, when liquid flows without cooperation, it becomes volatile. It creates some pretty wild currents, but the Spirit of God, the fluidity of the Spirit in, in us brings about unity. And then third, energy. They believe energy is needed for life to exist. In our faith, what is the energy? <laughs> I don't want to sound too mystical, um, but I believe that our power source is baptism of the Holy Spirit. Luke 3.16 says, And John answered and said to them, As for me, I baptize you with water, but one is coming who is mightier than I, and I am not fit to untie the thong of his sandal. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Baptism of the Holy Spirit persists today we are believers and proponents for the baptism of the holy spirit i believe it is essential for the life of every believer um so as we close this first session out i want to encourage you to have some conversation uh with your groups um let's talk about some of these things and specifically i've given you a couple of questions um for to to get the groups going um here's what i want you to to consider number one is the gospel good news um, the gospel is all about Jesus saving us from sin. This is the good news. In our culture, I'm not so sure that we receive this as good news, primarily because we're not really aware that we need to be saved from sin. We're not really aware of sin, a sin problem. And so I'm not sure that the majority of our, of our Western culture understands this is good news. But thanks be to God, through the power of His Spirit, He begins to convict us and makes us aware of this sin in our life and how it, it keeps us from walking peaceably with God. Well, ancient culture understood the weight of sin. 
They understood all of the requirements needed in order to have peace with God through the sacrificial system that existed at that time. So when Jesus came and relieved them of the burden of the sacrificial system and opened up the door for people to have fellowship with God, this was incredible news. Is this good news for you? Uh, the second thing I want you to consider is, are you prepared to investigate God's plan more deeply in order for you to see the gospel advanced in this community, in your own life, in your jobs, in your schools? Are you prepared for that? And then thirdly, would you be willing to seek the Lord for a baptism in his spirit and in fire? Hey, spend some time talking about this. I'm so excited to spend this semester with you. Um, thank you for your time today. Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that as we begin to move forward through these groups, I ask you that you would help us to begin from a place of unity. The commonality is Christ. Um, and if there is someone sitting in this group that doesn't know you, Lord, I pray that as they journey with us, um, Lord, that you would begin to pull them into your presence. Bring them to a place of awareness of their great need for you. Um, and give us all that awareness to continue to pursue you and go deeper. We each share a great need for you. Lord, I pray that you would put a mighty hunger in our hearts um, for your presence, to really walk in the fullness of what you've called us to do, and to arrive at a place where we share a corporate mission and vision, uh, to see and expect you to do great things in our lives and in this city for your glory. We ask these things in the mighty matchless name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Hey, I'm Pastor Aaron. I look forward to seeing you this Sunday. God bless.